Okay, in the examination of the infant, there's a couple of things that are important to keep in mind before even beginning the examination. One is to always have the equipment readily available. Um, two, you want to start with what we call the quiet areas, which is the heart and the lungs. And three is to make sure that you never leave the child unattended. Okay, we're going to begin. This is Journey, and I'm going to begin by listening to her heart. And we're going to use the acronym, A Pretty Tough Murmur, to evaluate the aortic, the pulmonic, the tricuspid, and the mitral valve. It's important to be sure and warm up your equipment prior to beginning the exam. Get the right sternal border. Aorta. Pulmonic. Tricuspid. And the mitral valve. Okay. And in, in, in the emphasis to save time, I would normally do this again, this time utilizing the bell of my stethoscope. But now I'm going to move on and evaluate the lungs. It's important to listen to all the lung sounds, starting at the apex. Going to the left apex, left mid lung field, right mid lung field. And it's important to go side to side so you can compare the breath sounds. Right lower lung field, left lower lung field. Be sure to listen to the lateral aspect of the lungs. Okay, good. And now, to demonstrate listening to the posterior lung fields, I'm just going to take Journey, I'm going to roll her towards Dad. And here you're going to have the parent help you support the child. So this frees you up to do a good evaluation of the posterior lung fields. Again, starting at the apex. Bless you. Go from side to side. Again, comparing breast sounds. Okay, good. Okay, now what I'm going to go ahead and do, since I have Journey here and I'm using my stethoscope, I'm going to go ahead and listen for bowel sounds. We'll listen in all four quadrants of the abdomen. Right upper quadrant. Left upper quadrant. And here we're just listening for the presence of physiologic bowel sounds. Left lower quadrant. Right lower quadrant. Okay, good. All right. Once we have the quiet areas out of the way, we can proceed now with a head-to-toe examination. So beginning with the head, I'm just going to palpate the infant's head, feeling for the shape of the head, looking for any signs of battle scars of delivery. I'm going to palpate her anterior fontanelle. Should be soft without any bulges. And the posterior fontanelle. Good. Okay. And while I'm doing the physical assessment of the, of the infant, it's important to just evaluate the skin, looking for any indication of infantile rashes or skin discolorations. Again, never leaving the child unattended. We can start now with the head-to-toe exam, and I'm going to check her for a red light reflex, or for the red reflex. Thanks, Dan. Good. Okay, good. Red reflex present bilaterally. And now we're going to do the nose. I'm just basically going to look inside her nose, looking for pink mucosa, make sure that there's no septal deviation. And then again, this again is where the parrot comes in very handy. Grab her little hands here, look right up her nose. Good. Okay. And you can also that can evaluate the patency of the nose. You can also do that by obstructing one nose, one nostril at a time to evaluate patency. Now, what the fun part is trying to get uh, the infant to open the mouth so we can look inside. So, Dad, I'm going to let you bring her head back this way for me. Perfect. We can tickle the lower lip. Oh, she's doing so good. Okay. And if that had not been appropriate, what I could have done is taking a tongue depressor and put that gently against her tongue, and that also would have helped me evaluate the mouth. Okay. Okay. Then you just want to gently palpate for any indication of enlarged lymph nodes. Checking in the ax axillary areas. Okay. 
and also down here at the groin. Oh, okay, let's go back and evaluate her ear while she's got her head turned that way. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate a way to hold the infant so that she doesn't pull away from you and you run the risk of damaging the ear. Just gently put the pinky side of my hand against her head, take my finger and my thumb, gently pull the ear back. And good, that allows you to look inside. She's got a little bit of, of earwax in that ear, but it, the tympanic membrane looks fine. Okay, Dad, I'm going to have you turn your head this direction for me. And hold her right there. And again, with the pinky side of my hand, I'm just going to lay it gently against the infant's head. I'm going to pull back on the ear just a bit. And I'm going to brace my hand actually against Journey's body to keep me from accidentally poking this too far into her ear. Good. Okay, good. Tympanic membrane looks fine. Okay, so after evaluating the nodes, then you want to feel for the brachial pulse and the femoral pulse here at the groin. Good. That's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to palpate her abdomen since I've already listened for heart or for abdominal sounds. I'm just going to palpate. Abdomen should be soft should have a nice rounded contour to it. Okay, good. Okay, now what we can do, we can take Journey through a simple range of motion here. We'll bring your arms up, flex her elbows. Okay, bend her wrist, good. And then I want to check her palmer grasp reflex. It's one of the primitive reflexes that you check on infants. See how she's grasping my finger there? That's good. And let's see here. And good. These are primitive reflexes, and most of these disappear by six months of age. Okay. Now what we're going to do, um, let's go ahead and do, since we already started with the reflexes, we can do the neural examination, which is a con continuation of the uh, primitive reflexes. I'm going to do the head lag. We just gently pull up on the arms and note control. See how she's controlling her head there? And the moral. And the, what the moral reflex does and does just what she did. She throws the arms out and the fingers start, or the fingers separate. And all that is normal. Okay. Okay, let's see. Now, let's see, she's eight weeks old, is that right? Okay, so we go ahead and um, check her for the stepping reflex. That's another reflex that we can do because she's right at the age where that starts to disappear. And what you do, you hold the child against you, and you just lightly put her foot against a firm surface. And then what she does, she imitates a step. And that's a nor again, and there, there she goes. See, Dad, she's walking. She's walking to you. Well, she is. She's a good girl. All right. OK, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and check her for any evidence of congenital hip dysplasia. And we do that very quickly and very easily. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull down on Journey's legs. And what I'm doing here, I'm checking the leg discrepancy. I'm looking for symmetry of uh, skin folds, which you see here at the ankle. They're uh, they are uh, symmetrical across and also at the knees. I'm going to do the galazi. I'm going to put her feet flat down on the table. It's important that the feet are flat down against her bottom. And again, what I'm doing, I'm checking for symmetry of skin folds and for symmetrical height of her knees, which is good. Okay, and now we're going to do uh, two maneuvers called the Ortolani and the Barlow. And what those do, those, um, the Ortolani checks for hip relocatability, the Barlow checks for dislocatability. And how that is performed, you take your fingers and put it on each side um, at the level of the greater trochanter. With the Ortolani, you do a hip abduction, bring the legs away from the body in a forward motion. Just like that. The Barlow, you adduct the legs and push back. And what you're doing with the Ortolani, you're feeling for a click or a cluck, clunk. And then with the Barlow, you're checking to see if you can feel for posterior displacement of the hip. OK. All right, Dad, let's go ahead and uh, let me check her spine. In order to do that, I'm going to have you hold her against you, OK? OK, now in doing this, I am Free up both of my hands so I can palpate her spinous processes. 
We're checking to make sure there's no abnormal curvature of her spine. It's easy to feel on little ones. Okay. Also, we'd be making note of any unusual hair tufts here because that's an indication there might be an underlying spina bifida that hasn't been picked up. And if Journey's diaper was off, we'd also be evaluating for symmetry of the gluteal folds uh, as another assessment for congenital hip dysplasia.